Hello Libra! Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. For the main part of the read, I'm using Tarot Illuminati by Eric C. Dunn. Supportive Oracle Cards, The Halloween Oracle by Stacy DeMarco. In case I've complained about it before, I found it. <laughs> so we're going to use it. The Halloween Oracle. Excited. I'm excited about it. Okay. Starting off, we got the star and the skeleton. So the skeleton can go different ways when I read it. I'm an intuitive reader. I just kind of roll with it. And I'm seeing, like, somebody, like, point out, like, I almost see, like, an instructor saying, this is this bone, and this is that bone, and this is how this goes, and this goes over here, and this is why this goes like that, and then these muscles attach like this, and this bone, get this, these two muscles put this bone together and I feel like somebody's talking about like the joints and the cartilage and all that stuff um, I, I'm feeling like this is your role and it's kind of like you're explaining people like okay this is what you deal with you deal with the skeleton this is what your skeleton does to other people and how it affects other people and you're explaining like how all this works together with the whole system and your knowledge is a little bit above other people not in a negative way you simply know things that people other people just don't it's not it's not like a negative thing I'm, I'm not I hope it doesn't come across as negative because I'm not meaning it to you just there's certain things you know and you you're aware of this kind of like again you're the instructor I feel like you have that instructor energy like you know how this comes together and you have to explain it to other people but even though you're explaining it you can only seem to explain so much you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, your your references and where you've learned this stuff has been over years is what I'm getting. And like, you can't teach somebody what you've learned in years in, in a few minutes. It's not going to happen. <laughs> like, or even a couple hours. But you got the star card here? Okay. You're very strong with your communication. Um, you seem to get the wheels going for people. Whatever's going on, you get those wheels going. I'm getting a good energy here. Um, optimism does seem like it's here. I like this. The first thing I, I feel like they want you to be aware of is like, make sure that the people you're talking to are aware that there's a lot of layers to this situation. And I feel like that's another reason for the skeleton. There's the bones, there's muscle, there's cartilage, there's skin, there's organs, there's teeth, there's hair, there's, then you got people clothes on it. And then, you know, that's what you do to it. You know, there's a lot of layers going on here. You want people to realize that. And you want them to realize you're telling them what you can. You're trying to include them or enlighten them as much as you can. But you also want to, you also want to make point that, you know, it took you a long time to learn what you learned. Like, this isn't something you can learn in five minutes. Because I'm getting, people are getting inspired and we like this, right? But you got the emperor here with the, the page of cups. Somebody might get really excited and think they know more than they do. Now the Emperor is Aries, right? I have Aries in my chart. I definitely do. Um, so I like Aries energy, but the reason I'm pointing this out is because Aries is the opposite of Libra. And sometimes the two don't get along. The thing is, Aries is that opposites that they actually, have, if they can get along, they can do a lot of good together. Even though Aries is warlike and um, Libra tends to be more on the peaceful side. Aries can help Libra achieve peace that will be sus sustainable. And Libra can help Aries kind of like work with people in a more calm, more like conducive, more cooperative way. It's kind of like Aries won't put up for too much BS. But then Libra will could be like, well, we don't have to come at everything as if it's a four alarm fire. <laughs> it's kind of like that's how the two of them balance. It's kind of like Ari Leo is like, or Libra is like, listen, everything doesn't have to be a four alarm fire. We don't have to get out, you know, the, the fire hoses every time and cause a big situation. Yes, we need to put out this fire, but we can do it a little bit easier, a little bit calmer this way. On the opposite side of the coin, Aries could be like, listen, 
I know you want to do things nicely, and that's good to a point, but at, at some point we got to address the truth and go right for it. So they balance each other quite well. If you can get that balancing energy in there with this person, because they get very inspired, but you want to keep them on the realistic tone. Like, listen, you as the Libra know a lot, and you've learned it over years. You're not gonna, nobody's gonna pick that up in two minutes. It's not gonna happen. So you wanna try to keep them on the level, try to keep them on the realistic term, tone, tone. You definitely don't wanna uninspire them, I get that. You don't want to uninspire them, but you wanna keep them in the, the realm of reality here. Because again, I mean, they're gonna run forward with it, and they have the midnight here. The midnight can be a very, um, like it's a very interesting, like it's got a very interesting picture of this lady's arm. I think that's the garment, but her arm up in front of the clock, it almost looked like it was getting dissected or it had been dissected. It just has some weird lines on it there. But I'm getting, they're taking their fragmented energy, the fragmented information they have, and they're running with it. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's kind of like just because you find a cookbook with a nice recipe, doesn't mean you're going to be successful with that recipe if you don't understand how to fold things in or how to make stiff peaks with egg yolks or whatever you need to do. Like if, if, if the person getting the recipe doesn't understand the instructions, like doesn't understand what this actually means and what that actually means, they may have a great recipe, but if they don't know what to really do with it, it's not going to really work. There's going to be problems. Um, because they see they are they're running forward really fast. Like they're like, hey, this is gonna be cool. I'm inspired. I'm I'm inspired. The Libra told me that, and I know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna run far ahead and make this happen. The midnight is telling me they're ex they're they've got fragmented information and that they're excited about. They're just kind of they're going in the dark here. They think they know more than they do. I do think that's the th they they think they know more than they do. Yeah, I've been in that boat. <laughs> been in that boat before um, you've got the the skull of flowers I feel like when they start running forward all you want to do is make sure that you gave them the best chance and you told them what you could tell them like hey there's a lot more there's a lot more factors I can't tell you all the factors there's a lot more going on here than you see I can only do so much but I also see it's like if you can set this up the right way it's kind of like you know there's going to be problems and you're hoping that you know the information you gave them they won't go too far out of the lines and you're just kind of have to you're going to kind of have to wake it wait and hope for the best the skull of flowers is a good one because it's kind of like I know there's a problem here but I just got to hope for the best I feel like that's what this I'm getting from that I know there's a problem here but I got to hope for the best now this is the next spot that comes in three cards face down I'm like nervous about them. Eh, not that bad. It's two of Swords, Seven of Wands, Ace of Pentacles. This, it all comes in like in a pile, just to be fair. But when I'm getting with these, this this is going to be a good start. They're going to have they're going to hit a they're going to hit a block because they don't know as much as they think they know. They are definitely going to hit this block. That's the first thing. All seems to happen all at once. But they're not willing to give up. That's good, too. We like that. I think we really like that. They don't know as much as they think they know. They hit a block. But they're not willing to give up. We like that. We like that. Now it needs to be fixed. We need to figure out what's really going on here, what they're really trying to happen, trying to make happen. And I feel like that your energy has to come forward and help them kind of, like, bring it back down to reality like this is a great idea this is a great direction you're going into but now let's look at this in a way that it could actually be applicable and actually happen let's do that there's a lot of communication they still want to run forward very like they're very inspired still the the chariot is like they have a lot they want to do there's a lot they want to make happen and i see them branching out with the the spider energy they're trying to communicate they're trying to connect all the dots. They're trying to fill in the missing pieces. They're trying to figure out what's wrong here and what's wrong there. And why isn't this working? It needs to be resolidified. It needs. To, we need to form this Ace of Pentacles. This needs to be formed. Once it's truly, honestly, correctly formed, yes, this can be a great thing. This is where you come in. I think. Hold on. 
What part do you come in in this? They may communicate with other people before you. Okay, okay, so you may hear of it. You may be, I think you're going to easily hear of it. They're communicating with other people, trying to fill in the blanks, trying to ask this question, trying to ask that question. Sooner or later, and when I get the DNA here, it says ancestors, but I see that DNA, that double helix DNA thing. I can't think of what you call it. It's not a, I mean, double helix is part of it. Is that a double helix? Is it, all right, the DNA thing. Anyway, you have the technical knowledge that's necessary. You have it. They're going other places, right? Sooner or later, they're going to be directed back to you is what I'm getting. Be ready for it. I'm getting, once you know what's happening, try to keep connected with it. Try to keep an eye on it. But wait for them to approach you. But while you're keeping an eye on it, kind of form or think out what you think needs to happen or try, try to look into it here and there and get yourself ready, like get yourself prepared to handle the conversation before it happens um, as much as you can because you have the information. You have the sun card and you have the hearth. This is something where this person is going to need you to really make a success out of this. I feel like what I'm getting again is like you're going to see it going on before they approach you. You're going to hear that they're asking other people. Gather what information you can in the meantime and wait for them to approach. That way you're already set and you're already kind of like you already have ideas and thoughts. I feel like if you're able to do that, I feel like it will calm this energy, especially when they realize you know what they're doing and you're just trying to help them move forward. I feel like it calms that energy a lot, it makes it a lot easier to deal with. The last three cards, Eight of Pentacles, is it the Skull of Stars? Yep, Skull of Stars and the Apple, or Apple. I, I'm an intuitive reader, so I read this card differently, but right now I'm feeling like, it's almost like the sweetness of that apple is overflowing. That's kind of what I'm feeling. The Skull of Stars, this is, very, this is a very good card, but it's kind of like things have to come together. More things have to come together still, but this can be really good. It's also going to take a lot of work to get this to work out. Um... There's, there's a point here where you get to decide how much you want to be involved. This is something that's going to be very good. This is going to go much better than expected. This is a good start that's going to go great places. It's a good, it's a good start that's going to end up in a great place. I don't know if I said that right still, but whatever. So it is going to get continually better and be very well worth it. You do have the ability to decide like how deep you want to be. Do you want to be an advisor or a participant or a partner, something like that? Take it seriously. It is going to go very well. You just got to decide what level of commitment, what level of connection you want to it. It's going to go really well, though. So it's up to you. I feel like it has a lot to do. It's a lot with who you're dealing with. And what it's going to do or how it's going to like affect your life. Even though it's very successful, you have to decide, is that okay with my life? Is that going to derail other things in my life or do, it, can I, do I have room for this? Um, it is going to take up, because it is going to take a lot of work. So it's going to take up a lot of your time too, even though it's very successful what it is. Because I feel like it's going to be overflowing and like I don't feel like it's limited. I don't feel limited with this. I think that's the last thing with this. It's kind of like... When all is said and done, is this something you want to be more cemented in your life? This person isn't that bad, but it's kind of like there's a balance. Like I explained that in the beginning. I purposely kind of did that so you would realize like maybe a little bit more insight of who this person is. Because I feel like they, it will be very difficult to deal with them on occasion, but it can be very prosperous at the same time. On the flip side... It's, it's very prosperous for both you and this person. You both improve each other's lives, whoever this person is. So it's worth it. I think it's worth it. you got to decide what you think is right. All right, I think we got to the point. So I'm going to end that here. Thank you for watching. If you'd like a direct reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. That's james, the number four, astral at gmail.com. Thank you.